Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Educated Call Snap channel. How you doing? All right, so today we're going to be talking about Toxic Sarah. It's definitely one of the most popular decks that run Luke Cage, and I do think Luke Cage is going to have an uptick of playability with High Evolutionary coming out. So I figured it's a good time to talk about this deck in particular. Let's begin. So Toxic Sarah is really just a hazmat engine. You're kind of trying to set up your board and your opponent's board so that you can finalize with the finishers, whether that be hazmat or some other counter tool that you're deciding to play. But essentially the strategy is to just control your opponent's board and, and your board so that you can reduce their whole board with the late game with the Luke Cage hazmat combo. But there are other things you can do if you don't have that combo in your head. You can definitely take advantage of Enchantress. You can take advantage of Valkyrie. So there are other things to do. But your main end goal is to usually finish with Luke Cage Hazmat. So we have the standard list. This one, there's actually more that you can do with uh, Hasbro and Luke Cage, but this is probably the most common list you have. Does run Sentry, which is a pretty fun card to play, and some other counter tools, but generally this is what you're going to be looking at if you are just blindly looking for a Luke Cage Hazmat deck list. Now, in terms of core cards, there aren't super too many super important core cards. Of course, you have Sarah. This really just lets you flood the board, also lets you relax react on the last turn if you need to change up your strategy and then of course you have hazmat right one of your main win conditions it just creates large point swings with luke cage and then if you have hazmat right you're going to need luke cage right protects your board from the hazmat also just reduces negative point reduction especially if people are flooding and, and doing things with high evolutionary now in terms of the types of cards that you're going to have First off, you're going to have your tempo cards. So these are cards that you can just play on curve as tempo. And you really don't need extra set setup to utilize them correctly. So these ones I'm talking about, Luke Cage, Zabu, Sentry, Typhoid Mary, and Sarah. These ones you can just always play on curve if you need to. And they're not really required or, or used, used in other purposes. You can obviously wait to sneak out with Luke Cage, but... Generally, when it comes to this type of game plan, you want to be playing your tempo tools on curve whenever you can so that you don't really fall behind in power. Now, next up, we have setup tools. So these cards set up your finishers in some way, and they just require a little bit extra thought to utilize them. You can't really blindly play most of these. You can kind of some of them, but you do have to think about how they're being played hood, right? You, you might want to use that as your Viper target. So if you're playing Hood in a location where you already have cards, that's always gonna feel a little bit bad. Debris, you're right, you wanna control where you want your opponent's rocks to be. And then Carnage, obviously in Viper, you do have to make sure that you're Carnaging the right targets or Vipering the right targets, as well as setting up for Sentry if, you're, if that's your game plan, etc. Now, the last setup is just your finishers for control so these cards usually are played later in the game and they're usually a reaction to something if you are going to play them hazmat is your normal finisher but if you have other ways to take advantage of your other control tools with valkyrie enchanters definitely utilize them instead so they're they're not something you can play willy-nilly or something you paying attention to what your opponent is trying to do and then subverting their expectations with either a combination of the three. Now, how do we pilot this deck, right? The end goal of this deck is to control your opponent, making their plays awkward. And then you also want to set up with either Hazmat or Valkyrie as needed. So you're not always going to be playing Hazmat. Sometimes your opponent is just not playing a flooding deck and Hazmat really just does well if your opponent is flooding. So Valkyrie can be your secondary win condition in where they're playing a ton of big tools and you'll just use Valkyrie to win out there. So you cannot really be worried about showcasing your strategy early. So sometimes you you think to yourself, you don't want to play Luke Cage because it basically telegraphs that you're playing some type of hazmat deck. I do think that's going to not be the case uh, 
very soon where people are just running Luke Cage as a text. So you'll you'll have that um, you'll have that not be as important re- relatively soon. But you do want to utilize your early energy. I said mana for ten point setup. You can't really not play your cards early, even if your opponent is tell even if you're telling your opponent what you're going to do because you need to have that pressure on the board. Now, something to be hyper aware of is all the combos in this deck. So there are a lot of cards that work well with other cards. So we have the Hood, Sentry, Debris. Those are giving you cards that you either want a Viper or Carnage. So that's something you can do. Typhoon Mary and Hazmat just work well with Luke Cage, of course. And then you also can Enchantress your Mary. And you can also use that Sentry negative 10. You can also turn that into a positive with Valkyrie. So you, you have to be aware of, A, even though this is here, I can set up with some of these other cards to really, really mitigate that downside. So that's just really something you have to be, you have to know and you have to be very comfortable with when you're playing these decks because these are really how you're going to mess with your opponent and make them have a mistake and really take advantage of their experience. So something to be thoughtful of. Now, if your end game plan is to Luke Cage Hazmat, you want to try to not have priority going to the final turns. So the reason is because by not having priority, they get to go first. And a lot of decks right now flood in the final turns. They play five, six cards. If you can Hazmat into that, right, that's going to really neutralize a lot of that swing that's going to happen in those final turns. So you want to try to not have priority. Now, that's kind of hard to do in this particular version of the deck because you are very focused on tempo. But if you can set it up where you don't have priority, always try to do that. Maybe you can play into a lane they've already heavily invested in to kind of not be above their power. That kind of thing is, is definitely how you can do that. So that that is something that can be hard to consistently do but if you can do that it, it's a really powerful um option and then always don't be scared to play hazmat even without luke cage not all the time but uh, definitely a reasonable amount of time even if you don't have luke cage you're still going to want to be playing the hazmat you you'll end up ahead if they have more use on the board than you and especially if they have priority then they get to flood and then you get to play your your hazmat that's really going to do a lot of work so sometimes you're not going to have luke cage but you're going to have the hazmat and just don't think oh i don't have luke cage i can't play this card you still can you just have to be more careful and more aware and make sure your ordering is correct right making sure the luke cage is or the hazmat's coming down before your other cards so that you're not putting that extra tick on those cards so definitely something you can do and definitely just be aware that you have that option even if you don't have the Luke Cage. Now let's talk about some of the powerful plays with this deck right we have that Sentry Viper interaction if you can give them the minus 10 power that's a huge point to a 23 points of progression so that's definitely something that can really mess with your opponent if you can get that set up and obviously with zabu you can get sentry on three and play viper on four so that can be a really early um disaster for your opponent next up we have this just control to us so you can go hood debris carnage right you you get rid of those negative rocks and the hood and you also could uh, set up for that demon in the later stages of the game. So that's another really nice tool you can do. You can also combo with Viper if you want to, but I, I like the Sentry Viper combination more than using giving them a hood or anything like that. And then last, you have that Sarah Luke Cage Hazmat, really the core card combo where you just set up for making a lot of negative ticks on your opponent so that they struggle to really have a lot of high power so those are really some of the combos but obviously there's significantly more we've talked about it in the high how to pilot but these are some of the things you can do to really make things awkward for your opponent now there's a secondary type of version of this is which is where you utilize hit monkey uh, more than using the luke cage hazmat definitely if you're playing Hidden Monkey, you're, you probably might be familiar with this type of deck list. 
but it still has that Luke Cage, Sarah has that interaction. It's just not really focused on the Luke Cage hazmat. It's it stops being the finisher win condition with the normal deck list. You have a lot of setup with the hood, with the debris, with the viper to really give your opponents tons of cards that you can just follow up with the Luke Cage hazmat. But with this one, the hazmat is not really the win condition anymore because you don't have any setup, and it becomes just comes this cheap tool for the hit monkey flood so you're now more reliant on hit monkey on angela on bishop being those power plays and then the luke cage hazmat is just an extra flooding tools that you probably want to combo with sarah right they'll cost one so you can just play a ton of these uh, one cost cards at the final turn so that's definitely some other way of utilizing this this is pretty popular as well but it just plays in a completely different play style. So you can't really play those two versions in the same way. So I definitely wanted to mention that this is an alternative way of playing. Not really focus on the hazmat, but still focus on the monkey Flood. Just using the hazmat as a tool for that engine. Now talking about the flex spot options. We have Lizard, right? It's a good two drop. You can enchant with it. Just works well. Killmonger Nova. Easy way if you don't have a ton of one drops, which this deck doesn't really have. You have Shank Chief. That's really your alternative way of countering people if they're playing a ton of lots of Shank Chival targets. You have Kitty Pride. You have Jeff. You have Wong. Omega Red. Lots of different ways of really taking advantage of your early game. Then you have Basque. It was in the Hit Monkey, but you can also play it in the regular deck list. But usually that's more bounce style. If you're going to be playing Bass, it's not really the uh, Sentry, Typhoid, Mary style. You're not really going to be running those if you're running a Bass. Polaris is a nice three. Same thing as Maximus, right? They're just nice three drops that work well into Sarah Decklist. Then you have Scarlet Witch and Green Goblin. Just nice control tools if you want to add extra control into your deck list. Now, in terms of core cards, the deck can be adjusted to run many of the other cards. You don't really need anything else, but you do need Luke Cage and Hazmat if you're going to be playing Toxic Sarah. Well, Toxic Sarah is fully relied on having Luke Cage Hazmat. Sarah, in particular, I would say is super recommended. It's not necessarily 100% recommend, uh, required as Luke Cage Hazmat, I would say, is pretty 100%. Of those toxic Sarah deck lists, you're gonna have Luke Cage has a Sarah. Ninety percent of decks will have Sarah, but you can find deck lists that do work even without the Sarah. So if you don't have Sarah, a lot of people do always say, "Hey, I like this, but I didn't, I didn't pick up Sarah early." And almost all the decks use Sarah. Well, you can run this without Sarah. It's just gonna be a little bit more reliant on some other way of doing something in the final turn, whether that be Dr. Doom or Odin or, or whatever. You don't need the Sarah, but it is something that is pretty common in these type of deck lists. Now, when to snap, usually if you're snapping with this, you want to have something going for you that can be locked down. So if you've locked down a location very strategically and they can't really mess with it, and then you know, oh, it has my, you win for sure. Right, that can be a way to snap. So you can do that with Viper Debris if you run other things like Green Goblin. That's another way of doing it. Uh, the early century Viper Swing can also be a good reason to snap. So if you can set up like Zabu into Sentry into Viper plus something else, right, like Viper Luke Cage, that can be a really nice swing. You get so much power to, uh, of a swing, right? You're giving like 20 plus power in one turn with that swing. So that can be a really nice reason to snap if you know your opponent can't really get rid of it very easily. That can be a good tool. And then also just having the perfect setup. So that's like Zabu Sarah setup with good finishers. So that's Luke Cage hazmat kind of thing and with some other extra tools. That can also be a good reason to snap since you have the perfect setup. Maybe your opponent doesn't. That can be something to do. And then just the Luke Cage hazmat tempo swig. Now with tempo swing, I kind of mean that you don't have priority, so they get to do they get to do their full play. Then you finish with Luke Cage hazmat. That can be a nice reason to snap because sometimes your opponent's not expecting 
them to lose power, right? They're predicting, oh, I'm going to have this much power on the board. Well, it, losing power can really put a wrench in things, so that can be a reason to snap. So just be aware of your options and be careful, but that those are some of the reasons where you want to be taking advantage and snapping proactively. Proactively. And there's some of the weaknesses, right? There are a couple of weaknesses for this. The Sandman wave, I think, are just very common weaknesses where if they hit you with the Sandman, hit you with the wave, hit you with the leech, even though leech is not as common anymore, those could really mess up your game plan since you're losing a lot of what you want to be doing. This deck does have low potential power. It can't really hit 30 points of power very easily unless you're flooding one lane and one lane only, which usually won't give you the win either. So there's not a lot of like, oh, I have tons of power in every board state another thing is that you can't really affect um can't really hit lanes that are locked down so you don't you can't go into a sanctum or anything like that even like a de do death's domain you can't really play into that very easily i mean you could like play debris but that's not really going to save you a lot of the time so that's something else that you could argue as a weakness there. You do rely on your opponent flooding. Now you do have alternative options where you can go Valkyrie and, and such such if you do want to play at that angle. But a lot of times if you're playing it normally, you're going to want to play Hasman the final turns. If your opponent's not flooding, they're playing like one card per lane or two cards per lane. You're not really getting that much of a, a tempo swing by doing that. So that can definitely be a weakness of this deck. And then this is a deck that plays tempo. So you're playing Sentry, right? Which is a lot of power. You're playing Typhoid Mary, which is a lot of power. So you have cards that just give you tempo, but you prefer not to have that priority. You, you prefer to be able to do Luke Cage Hazmat after your opponent has played that final card. So that can be a weakness, in my opinion, where the way you pilot the deck is not the way the deck wants to be piloted since you're playing for tempo but you want to not have priority in the final turn so that that kind of mismatch i would say is a weakness in my eyes where how you play and how the deck wants to play aren't necessarily equal so those are some of the things you want to be aware of when you are piloting this deck and then i do have at the end some example builds for you so here, this is just another version of the Sarah decklist. You are, do run uh, Killmonger Nova instead, just to have some more tools for the final. This is definitely more Sarah Control-esque, but just running Luke Cage Hazmat as your final instead of some of the other things that people are running in Sarah Control. So it's definitely just more of a like old school meta, toxic Sarah, control style it still works you just have to be aware of your limitations next up we do have the new school of thought this deck list has really good stats uh maybe due to magic not really being having a ton of people countering magic right now since there aren't a lot of storm is played early and then there aren't really a lot of people running Scarlet Witch or, or stuff like that. So the magic can a lot of times get away with it. And then you do have this Wong hazmat combo where you can just pump that negative stat line as, as well as the Kitty Pride synergy with the magic and then the Hit Monkey with the Wong. So you just have a lot of pretty good synergies to work with this deck list. This is definitely the Hit Monkey style of Sarah, but you have some interesting tech tools to really take advantage of that particular style. Now, next up we have the Toxic Sarah, but this one has an Omega Red surprise angle. So you do play for tempo with the Maximus, but you now have this way of really surprising your opponent by having an Omega Red be your, your finisher instead of whatever type uh century or, or whatever you will have there so that can get some sneaky wins because the mega red is not a super common card people don't really play around it and assuming they'll usually just assume that you've 
lost a lane or so and they'll maybe ignore one of your other lanes so you can definitely get get ahead of your competition really mess them up with the omega red if you can get that to to work so it's definitely a cool build something you can work with see if you like this style compared to some of the other ways of playing the deck and then next up we have a deck list that doesn't run i, I guess our next two deck lists don't run sarah so i did say that you don't need sarah and here are some of the lists you can run if you don't have Sarah. So this is definitely a more Odin-esque version of the deck. You're running the Toxic Sarah. Well, you're running the Lucate Hazmat early game, but your your end game is really to just Odin in the final turns. But you, since you have the Hazmat, you can play Hazmat early and then finish off by playing Odin in the Hazmat lane again, primarily with Wong. So you... You do have this nice like double tick of negative power that can really be annoying to your opponent. So that's definitely something you can do. It's a very cool list. I do like how it it runs. So if you don't have Sarah and you want to try uh, a Luke Cage list, be my guest. This one seems particularly fun. And then next up, we have another version of this list. Instead of running Odin, we're now running Thor and Jane Foster to really work. So this is the Hit Monkey version, but without the Sarah. So you do just kind of focus on dropping a ton of power, and then you play the Thor, and then the Thor will give you zero cost cards, and then the zero cost cards can be comboed on the final turn to have a really large Hit Monkey. So you're doing it that way instead of the play play uh, Sarah and then Flood. You're going to be flooding, but with Thor and Yellow Jacket and that kind of thing. So definitely think this is another cool way of running a Hazma deck without the Sarah. Definitely you know Sarah is not the card that everybody has. So I do think these can definitely work out for you and they're cool deck lists. So I thought I would showcase them here. So hopefully you guys learned something and you know like this. I do think that there's going to be a lot more Luke Cage with hit, uh, High Evolutionary coming out. So I figured I will give some deck lists that can take advantage of Luke Cage. If you're not the one playing High Evolutionary yourself, you can say, okay, I want to have some good answers for that. Not necessarily saying this will counter High Evolutionary or anything like that. Maybe it's just too strong. It doesn't matter. But still wanted to have a deck breakdown. And I do think this is a good time to be showcasing toxic sarah so hope you guys enjoy it and i'll see you in the next one have a great time and bye bye once you watch him you won't go back he'll teach you tomorrow snap your skills will be improving how you do when you hit infinity and won't go back educated call and snap